Hey y'all, guess what? It's gonna get up to 91 degrees today and it's not even May. This is an early warming trend for Tucson. Hi, I'm Cindy Brady. Remember her? <laughs> so I wanna show you how I prepared everything and then I'm going to talk about and show you what I've been doing to feel better and give you a little bit of update. And then I'm gonna talk about our expectations in our world. And I did get a little bit of a clue from reading a lot of your comments. And it made me ponder, like, they're all so different. How can that be? Um, so I think I've got a little bit figured out now. First of all, I'm gonna show you, I know these are black. But what I did was I got out my bucket, my just collapsible bucket, put some water in it. This is, well, this is wet. Actually, this is wet. Let me take this one off. I know, I got color going on today, everybody. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me see. There we go. Okay, a little bit of color. This is wet. And I got a bathing suit top on, and that's wet. It might come through here. And I, uh, I guarantee when I get done filming this and talking to you all, this top goes off. That way the, the uh, fan can really hit me. Okay, so I've got that on. Wet, wet, wet. Got my hair up because there's just no way. Um, I need, and in fact, I can even wet down my hair because it's up. I look like a little bunny or cat. <laughs> I look like something. I look other, <laughs> I don't look human, yeah. yeah. See, I can actually get these nice and wet. And that way, when the air hits. So you have to prepare. And that's what I wanted to do today. It is about 83 degrees in here so far. Not, it's not too far in the morning. It's still morning. So I know by around 2 o'clock, it's going to be really hot okay so how else did i prepare for this i'm i got all my running down running around <laughs> running down i got all my running around done this morning i'm done and i'll tell you oh, what i did and now i'm parked under solar panels that i know i'm going to be in the shade all day all day long i'm going to be in the shade <clears throat> what that means here's a clue so people say, well, why don't you have a 12 volt refrigerator? Because in the summer, you can't be sitting out in the sun getting power on my solar panel. So <clears throat> that's one of the reasons. I'm barely going to be getting my um, fans, keeping those going this summer, and, uh, and my phones and my lights. And that's about it. I mean, um, yeah, uh, these things do take power. The fans is what really takes power. Okay, so I've got this done and got my hair up. Now, look at this. Now, this is, um, these are, I think these are called frog. I can leave the uh, links for these. These are like chill pads, but it's a little bit different brand. They actually have color and I thought I'd go with that. But this is my power bank. And what I don't like is the fact that heat really ruins these when it gets really hot in here. So this is wet. In fact, if I really, I do have a couple, I have a couple chill pads too. What you do is you put these around your neck or against your skin and it keeps you cool. These are, it's damp, but it's not drippy. So I put these in my bucket, my collapsible bucket, and I wrung it out and then I wrung it all out. Oh, this is cool. And I just double it over because it's so long. And I just kind of put it over here. That way, air can go through. It's not hampering the, the fans of the grate. And, and th that way, it's sort of an evaporative. Okay, exhibit C, D, E, F. This is my humidifier. And because, well, see, every time it kind of turns, it's, it's got a safety valve where it stops running. See, I keep moving this so it stops. But I wanted to get this out because of, of, you know, my bronchitis. 
So my daughter, she's a nurse practitioner. She said, get one of these out. Now, um, oh, I do want to mention, one of you said, I can't believe nobody came to your rescue in Tucson if I was there. No, I had a lot of people wanting to help me. But, you know, going into the hospital, no. And um, my daughter came. And I was in a hotel room. There was nothing that anybody could have done for me. I just needed rest in the hotel. And it was on the outskirts of Tucson. So, no, people wanted to help me. So don't. Don't think that nobody wanted to. Okay, just, I wanted to mention that. Okay, so I got the humidifier going. Okay, now I've got my window cracked open and I've got my fan that's drawing air in. And on this side, I've also got my window cracked. Down here, down here, I've got one of those pads. This is another, it's a colorful one. I think they're called frog something and it's very cool. I've just got it draped over my um, Jackery. And then I've also got another fan that in case I can move that one around and put it anywhere that I need to put it to keep some air flowing in no matter how hot it's gonna get today. Okay, I'm gonna give you a little bit of an update on what's been going on with my chest, my bronchitis, and what I did this morning. Today was really one of the first days in like three weeks that I was sort of on the same schedule. But I do want to mention that you all said, oh my gosh, drink the Pedialyte that your daughter gave you. Don't put it in your storage. So I listened, I do listen to you. And I listened and I do like it. it tastes good and I do feel better. It tastes good. Almost tastes like like jello or something like that you know if you drink like jello um before it hardens it's got the kind of a nice tang to a cherry tang like jello well i drank been drinking water i had just a little bit of coffee this morning and um so what i did was i woke up at four normal put my alarm back on and because uh, i turned it off while i wasn't feeling good i got up pulled up my bed drove to where to drove to the gym. What I've been doing is doing a lot of, doing some facial massages um, before I put on makeup or anything like that. And I get cleaned up, drink my coffee, watch watch a little program. <clears throat> and then um, when I'm all ready to go, I go into the gym and I did. Oh my gosh, but here's what I did. I went in and got a hydro massage first thing. Oh yeah. And I thought that would probably be good. Just relax a little bit. And then I stretched. Yeah, that's what I did. I mean, I just stretched. I did do a few, I took my time. I did a few abs and I just took my time with it. I did, you know, usually I do about 50, but I did like six or seven. And did a couple of leg exercises and that was it. But it felt good to be there. I really paced myself. A lot of you said pace yourself. Well, I did. Then I went to um, my favorite restaurant and I saw Connie. She knew I was coming and look at what she brought me. Oh my gosh, from her tree. I love that, still got the leaf on it, isn't that beautiful? But I said, well, how many's left? She goes, not many. <coughs> I know, little bit of cough. Not many left, but oh, these are gonna, aren't these gonna help? Oh my gosh back to my um back to uh my fruit again vitamin c yes from a tree so that's really good and then i did go to walmart um picked up some more um vitamins and tried to get i did get some broccoli and i got a lot of um garlic so what i'm gonna do this afternoon is i'm gonna steam it and eat it yeah so I'm I'm rock and roll I'm ready to get better now I did want to talk about expectations I told myself hey you've been sick this is me talking to myself you've been sick but you don't do, do well being sick 
I don't like being sick. I mean, who does? Actually, though, I do believe that some people do like to be sick. I think that's what they're used to. I know somebody who she um, controls and manipulates her family through being sick and, and all of her ailments. She really does. I mean, it's anybody who knows her kind of recognizes that, but they're not really sure what to do about it. She has every ailment that you could possibly think of. And then she's very accident prone also. So I think that's her way of manipulating the world around her to give her the attention that she craves. So, and then what they did, then what they have to do is they have to serve her. You know, they have to do things for her. They're, how can I serve you? So I don't like that. I mean, I can recognize that in other people and I do, certainly don't want to recognize it in myself. So I told myself, self, <laughs> self, stop thinking of yourself as having bronchitis. Stop thinking about that you're really sick and that you're not breathing well. <clears throat> I want, so self, I want you to say to yourself, you are so much better. You are almost healed completely. And you know, cause I do want to be able to believe it. <clears throat> Your breathing is fine. You, you, you have energy and that you can do things that you didn't think you could do two, three, four days ago. So I did that. I expected that out of myself. <clears throat> and I found today to be um, on, on that order. I, I will say that doing some of the exercises very slowly was a good idea. And I really didn't feel like, you know, like my breathing was bad. But I did sense that when, as soon as I got up, and like would walk to the bathroom and come back. I was a little winded, so it's not, you know, it's not foolproof, not perfect. That I do need to get, um, keep working on my strength. But I, I refuse to just let, me, let myself fall and think, because as I think, what I hold in my head, I'm gonna hold in my hand. Yeah. Now, I did get I was reading comments and I found it really interesting that some of you said, um, from my last video, some of you said, well, not yesterday's video, but the video before you said, wow, you sound so much better. I'm so glad that you're on your way to recovery. But then there was another almost 50% that said, no, I wouldn't say 50. Okay. 35% of you said, Lee, you need to go back to the hospital. You are really sick. You sound horrible. I know it. I was like, wow. So there are, um, people have different expectations. I think they have something in their mind. They have something in their head. And they think that if I, if I'm having a little bit of, of di if I'm having difficulty, which I did, but I took care of it. If I have difficulty that, um, the world really is supposed to just stop. I've got some notes here and I want to look over them if you don't mind. Well, for one thing I wrote down, <clears throat> a, a thought came to me that we take our whole si Let's say the whole system, the system we live in. We take our system for granted. Oh my gosh. We think that this system is going to save us no matter what. Well, my expectations are totally different in the world. I don't have faith in, in the whole system at all. And I have been through the ringer in my life. I have been through quite a bit in my life, as most of you have. It's not like, oh, I've been through it and you haven't. No, but some of us have already been through the fire and we can take it. I can take it if, I, if I'm going through some issues, especially with my health, I have full faith that I will make it through because I've made it through so much in my life. And that's even as a child, I think I've mentioned it before, but I mean, I, I was a bedwetter and I'll just share that with you. I'm not ashamed of it, 
but I was shamed somewhat as a child because I was the only one in my family that did. I did later find out, which I don't know why somebody didn't let me know this. It could have helped that my dad was a bedwetter and I did find out later that it is hereditary. But my mother seemed to think that it was my fault. I was lazy, you know, but I wasn't. There was something that didn't click in my head and it didn't develop till later on. And it was the same for my dad. And um, so I've been through quite a bit in my life. I've been through adversity. Then I've been through adversity. I was a single mom. Uh, my husband was killed in a car accident. So I had four children to take care of. Do you think that I could just say, well, okay, well, this is going on. I'm just going to like sit down and, and uh, fall apart for a while. No, you can't do that. I am so, so resilient. And some of you say, well, you're just too independent. You don't want, well, I've had to do it myself. And I had to, while I was going through things, I had to make sure that four other people were taken care of. So this is, this is where I'm at. I do not take the system that we live in for granted. I don't take it for granted at all. I don't, in fact, anymore, I don't think it's there to really serve us. When I was in the hospital, I noticed a lot of holes in the whole system. And I knew that I was the only one that was going to be able to take care of me because I just don't think that um, the system in the hospitals are set up to meet everybody's needs except maybe in intensive care there's one caregiver per one patient in intensive care but other than that i mean we're pretty much kind of on our own in a way that's what i was seeing okay so i want to talk about having power thoughts those are power thoughts in our mind i am not sick i am very well my healing is in, I, I am improving every day in every way I'm going to make it I always expect good outcomes I always do I knew that I would be okay I did ask you all for help because that was a big bill um, it is still a big bill for um, the hotel room and it would have been even more um, I have people said well how are you can pay for this um, at the hospital well I have Medicare but it doesn't pay for every little thing so yeah this was an expensive illness and I really appreciate, thank you so much for everybody who's given me gifts for that. If you want to go to minivanlee.com and just uh, click on gifts, I have all amounts, even a little, little bit, like $5 will help me if you want to do that for me. So that's, I really appreciate it. And to all of you, yes. Now, like I said, some said I looked really good. And then some said I looked horrible. Go back to the hospital. So I thought, oh my gosh. Um, this sort of separates who we are by our perceptions. We perceive things differently, don't we? And I divided, I kind of thought, oh, this is, this person perceives the world this way. And then this person sees, perceives the world that way. You perceived me in that way. And I kind of got a gist of who y'all are. Um, because you all kind of saw something you saw, I would say just in two, um, two camps. One, one group saw it this way and the other group saw it this way. There were a lot of you that were along with me that said, wow, you look great. You're really improving. When I went to the restaurant um, and I saw my friend Connie, you know, she's, she's like, oh, you do look pretty good. And I said, I am so grateful for how much better I feel than what I was a week ago. So I have like, you know, the, the shot to the moon on how I feel now. And then what else did I write? We all have our own perceptions and those are guided by our experiences. And that's what made me think my perceptions are that, well, of course, everything's going to be okay because I've been down here and I know that I'm going to be okay. And I have, I have been okay. But if you are still counting on that system and you haven't been through a terrible fire yet, you're going to look at things like, oh my gosh, the world's going to end. Are, are you okay? You know, you're going to go maybe on that. It made me think, what will happen if the whole system fails? And it can. Come on. It can. 
a lot of civilizations have fallen. Yes. And we almost can see ours crumbling just a little bit. What if it completely falls apart and there, the hospitals, there are no hospitals. What if the grid goes down? What if we're attacked? What if the, you know, and I'm not saying we should all be scared about this. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying there are going to be two camps when this happens, if and when. One camp is going to be like, okay, everybody, let's get together. Let's get this done. How can we help? And, and you know, what's going to happen? Um, I'm here to help. And that would be where I'm at. I am. I always know that if, if, the, if, um, if the poop hits the fan, right, the doo-doo hits the fan, I'm going to be right there. And I'm going to be going, okay, this is where I rise up. This is, this is my glory day. But this other camp is going to be here. What are we going to do? Oh my God. And they're going to be falling apart. And they're going to be looking at things in a very negative way. Whereas this camp's going to be like, we're going to make it, everybody. Let's all pull together. And this, this camp is going to be like, I need help. What can I do? Please come serve me. And I just feel like, and, and, and the one that I talked about earlier about, you know, kind of manipulating people to help her. She'll be in this camp over here for sure. For sure. Does this make sense? So the strong minded and then the whole, and there's the strong minded and there's those who fall apart and crumble and look at things in such a, um, a dire way, a dire way. So here's how can we overcome this? Well, the way that I had to overcome it is I have to forget about that. I have, to, I have to forget the, the fact that a week ago, I wasn't getting enough oxygen in my lungs. And so I had to forget about that and I had to say, I'm okay. I am okay. This is all, I'm moving in that direction very quickly. Tomorrow is even going to be better. I'm not going to look backwards. Get it? And I have to move forward and... I have to press forward. I can't just stop. I can't just stop what I'm doing and say, oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to sleep for a very long time. And here's why I had to press forward to go to the gym was because if I just laid here and didn't do anything to help myself and start moving around, then I can go down and get pneumonia. That's how elderly people die. They get, they get an injury <clears throat> and then they just lay there. I, I, I worked in a nursing home before. I saw it happen so many times. Oh my gosh. And I saw them literally die in the nursing home because they refused to get up out of bed. They refused. And then they caught pneumonia and they just died. <clears throat> and so I, in no way would I let that happen. So that's why I wanted to go to the gym so that I could get moving. Does that make sense? Okay, so till tomorrow, everybody, perception. It really depends on our experiences, how we perceive things. And isn't it funny that, and then it's what makes the world go round. But we do all have sort of different perceptions of what's going on around us. So if you want to give me a gift and you want to help with this bill <laughs> over my head on, the, on the, um, the hotels, get my savings back up, you can give me a little gift. If you can't do it, don't worry about it. I love you guys. I really do. If you think, yeah, maybe I should, you know, here's a chance to maybe give something. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. And let's see, what? Oh, subscribe. And make sure that you're subscribed. And tomorrow I'll have something else to talk about. Probably not, you know, what's happened to me, but something else of, of interest to me. Something nomadish, right? Until tomorrow, everybody. I love you guys. Bye.